Yo, what's going on guys? This is Buddy Muffins. I got the patch 11.7 meta snapshot. These are all the comps you don't want to miss, just like how you missed out on some uh, investment opportunities back in 2012 or 2013. Uh, so going into the meta snapshot, we have like a very small patch in 11.7. It really didn't change anything. It buffed a lot of three star units, but honestly, who cares about three star units, especially the three costs and four costs? Like we don't get to that many of them in most of our games, so that didn't really change anything. The only major change was maybe the Talon change and the Darius change, but Talon's still garbage. Darius, no one's figured out a proper way to build him yet, but a lot of the comps have swapped around because there have been a lot of new optimizations that have been found on how to play each comp. If you compare this week's meta snapshot to last week's, uh, you can see that like all, all the S tiers are different, a couple of the A tiers shifted around and the B tiers, but all in all, it's like everything's playable this patch, which is why things are going to be shifting around. That's what I said last week. I was like, once people start playing a lot of A comp, people are going to use B comp to counter it. And then now that people are using B comp, people are going to use C comp to counter it. And then maybe to counter the C comps, you got to go back to A comp. It's going to be a perpetual cycle. So you got to adjust on a day to day basis. Uh, it's always best to learn all the comps or like really master one or two comps. Either or work. It depends on your play style, depends on what you like to do. But essentially right now people found a very good way to play keepers and keepers countered the slayer builds that were dominating everyone a lot of people are not building qss on kale they're going for ga instead keepers are also really good against kales without a qss because atrox pulls kale in the rise of assassin comps are countering the kales as well and the asols uh, so there are a lot of different changes right now and that's why keepers are now the best comp at least for these past couple of days so far Obviously, as the meta develops, people are going to find ways to counter the Keeper comp, and then Keepers aren't going to be that great anymore. But right now, I do think they are the best comp. A-tier, Slayers, Kale, Mages, Vanguard Mystic, Brawlers, Spirit, Sharpshooters, and Cultists. And then B-tier, Dragon Soul, Talon, Sharpshooters, Warlords, Duelists, and Assassins. And then do not play the C-tier. Oh yeah, also, like a lot of people were playing Fortunes in the early game, and this was really good for the Slayers and Mages build. But now that people are... But now that a lot of people are doing this type of fortune build, like you kind of grief each other because you need to go on a huge lose streak to cash out on your fortunes. And then if you face the other fortune players, one of the fortune players is only going to get like a maybe like a four loss streak instead of a six or eight loss streak instead of like a six or higher loss streak. And then that kind of like just destroys one of the fortunes games, but the other one gets a great game. So it's really like <laughs> heavily dependent on like how well you actually play the game. Comps don't really matter as much as you think. Uh, but let's get into the S tier. So we have the Kennen comp right here. Uh, notice we changed the positioning from all the way in the center to either left or right. You always want to be on the left or right and not the center. Uh, reason is you want to completely dominate some matchups and uh, it's okay to lose out on the other ones. Whereas if you're in the center, you kind of don't have a good matchup against anyone. Uh, so always position on the same side as the enemy you are facing. Luckily, this comp runs Aatrox, which pulls people in so that like if someone does happen to be... Uh, on the far side of you like you still get some counterplay with the Aatrox but obviously you want to be on the same side as people. Uh, I updated the Zaya items. Double handed justice plus jeweled gauntlet seems to be performing the best so far and then set you just want AP on him. A uh, pretty standard you just roll down at like oh yeah I have like a guide on how to play all these like a short blurb along with a video guide here on how to play this comp and you guys can check that all out on my website moneymuffins.lol and click on the meta snapshot and also like check out the other stuff on the site. Uh, we'll be coming out with some set five news like soon as soon as it comes out. So definitely look out for that. If I were to describe how to play this comp in as few words as possible, I'd say you want to stabilize at level six, stabilize at level seven, and then roll down on level eight, preferably at around five one and find your comp such as three star Kennen, six keeper with like two star Zaya, uh, two star set. You don't have to hit all of these conditions that I'm talking about. You just need to hit one or two of them, at least on 5-1, and then eventually hit the rest later in the game. Uh, you want an Orn for a lot of Orn items for the late game. So that's essentially the basics of how to play this comp. Again, if you want more detail, head on over to this video guide here or go into the website. Uh, onto the A tier, so we have Slayers. Slayers, I still think, are a very good comp. They're just a little tricky to play. They're, it's a very expensive comp. You look at this comp right here, you only have one two cost and one three cost, whereas other comps they run like one cost unit, more two cost units, and they only have like one four cost carry or at most two of them. But this one runs four four costs and then one five cost, which is super, super expensive. So it is a little hard to play this comp without fortune or without getting an extremely strong early and mid game. So only go for this if you are kind of like high rolling. Uh, but if you hit it, it is one of the strongest comps in the game, especially with late game Samira. So Trindamir and Olaf, 
they completely destroy stages four and five, and then Samir is like your stage six and seven win condition. Uh, so it's just an overall really strong comp there. Executioner Kale, this one, it's like, this build has been a staple of the set since it started. Uh, so if you guys don't know how to play this yet, um, well, you probably should have learned about it like two months ago. I posted a guide with this with the with the at the time rank one player DQA. I think he's been rank one like for the longest time this set, at least in North America. Uh, he wrote a full guide on this. We did a video guide on it as well. And I played this Kale to GM. Uh, so go ahead, check that out if you want to learn more about the Kale build. But essentially, aura items on Kindred or Yumi. Kale, give her three items. Uh, they don't matter that much. They're pretty important, but they don't matter that much. So don't stress too much about best in slots. As long as you have like two or three support items, the rest of the Kale items, they just have to be good enough to play her. And then Lee Sin's like your late game win condition because he is a broken unit and he just kicks everyone off the board. On to Mages. Mages, it's like another fortune build. You get two-star Aesol that carries you through all of stage four after you cash out, and then you hit a Swain. Maybe you double Nico him. Maybe you got a Mage Cap for him. Maybe you got like another Dragon Soul Spatula as well, and then you could do like lots of crazy stuff like six Dragon Soul, five Mages. You could go nine Dragon Soul. You could go seven Mages. All that stuff is really, really fun, to be honest with you guys. And then Swain with like Warmogs, or any sort of defensive items are going to be destroying literally everything with the seven mages buff. And then Aesol, he's still the cleanup guy, you know, he still ults and like, or I guess he sneezes or something like that. And then he just evaporates like half the map. He needs to sneeze twice though, you know, you got to get that second wave in. And then onto the next build, we have Fabled Vanguard Mystic. This, bu this build has been buffed a lot in recent times, so you definitely want to at least know the basics of how to play it. So this build shares a lot of items with the Aesol comp that we just looked at, which is Hexec Gunblade, Jeweled Gauntlet, Hand of Justice, Guardian Angel on your carry, Chalice of Powers to support that, and then just some random tank items for the front line. So the random tank items normally go on like Annie in the Mage build, but in the Vanguard build, you could put it on any of the Vanguards, that all works. Uh, you could go 4 Vanguard, 4 Mystic, you could go 6 Vanguard, 2 Mystic, you could even try out the 8 Vanguard. That build got buffed a lot, so if there are a lot of Slayers in your lobby, if there are a lot of Sharpshooters, go for the 8 Vanguard build because you get a 1,000 armor that, even Last Whisper, it doesn't quite penetrate through everything. Uh, just because it's just like, even after Last Whisper reduces everything, I think Last Whisper is like 70% armor reduction. So if you get to 8 Vanguard, which is 1,000 armor, you still have 300 armor, which is a lot of damage reduction. So even Last Whisper doesn't even counter that. You just need to have a lot of magic damage. So it's a really fun build to try if you get a lot of Vanguard spatulas and if you get the Vanguard chosen. Um, onto the next build, Brawler Shivana, another classic composition because it's been played throughout the whole set. It's really, this is probably one of the stronger mid game comps along with Keepers. So, Keepers and Brawlers in stage three and stage four, no one comes close to them because they are revolving around the three cost carries. You're almost always going to have them two starred. And then, yeah, they just destroy everything as long as you don't have terrible items on them. And the only thing that's really required for this comp is the Runons on Shivana. The other two items, they could be any sort of damage item. And then getting a level 1 set at level 8 is very crucial because then you get the 8 Brawler buff, which gives a lot of health and attack damage to your whole team. Now onto Spirit Sharpshooters. Uh, this build, it's like on and off in popularity. It depends on like whether like a couple of streamers play it or not, but I, I think it's still really good. You just can't go for it every game, but if you do get a chance, if you get like a ton of Tristanas early, let's say you get like three Tristanas and then like a Tristana chosen during stage two. So you have six of them. It's a very strong comp to try. Or if you get the same thing with Dianas with some lockets, essentially you run no front line and then you build lockets on Diana as your front line so that your team can tank some hits. The spirit units all cast, giving tons of attack speed to your Tristana. And then your Tristana just goes crazy throughout the whole game. Uh, it's a very strong composition if you hit it, but if you don't hit it, you are absolutely screwed because you need to know how to pivot out of it or go into some sort of like worst case scenario comps or realize when it's time to play for like sixth place instead of first place. But if you hit everything, like you will stabilize so hard that you will win streak like almost for the rest of the game until super, super late game. Next up is Cultus. Cultus, I bumped up to the A tier because I think they're super, super strong right now. Like I just played like, I don't know if you guys caught my last video, but like I played quadruple sunfire cape with nine cultists and i got second place like i didn't even have anything that insane i literally wasted like three items and like sunfire cape isn't even a good item in like in general but let alone building like three of them uh so i definitely think this actually is a really good build it's very popular in like korea 
not so much in North America. It's decently popular in Europe, but like in North America, it's just starting to pick up in popularity. I play in NA, so like that's why I'm a little biased in terms of my analysis. But it's just like a stat check comp. Like a lot of people, they don't know how to make comps stronger than nine cultists, or if like the meta is really aggressive, such as like everyone's like dying really early. Nine cultists is going to be the comp to go for because it spikes really hard really quickly. Uh, and then it kind of falls off towards the late game. Towards like the super late game, you want to pivot out into something else or get like three stars for your entire team. You need to do one or the other. Um, but yeah, it's a very fun build to do just because Galio is doing the carrying. I mean, Callista pulls her weight as well, just not as much as other carries in their respective compositions. Now onto the Dragon Soul composition. This is just like a mix of the Slayer and Mage build above. I prefer the Slayer and Mage builds, but like Dragon Soul, if you get Dragon Soul chosen as you're rolling down for one of the above builds, uh, just go for something like this. It's really, really powerful. Uh, just like frontline everyone with the GA on ASOL, like they all get the Dragon Soul buff. You could put an Olaf instead of Shivana, it doesn't really matter. Uh, you could still run Mage Cap on Swain if you get a Mage Spatula, or like Dragon Soul Spatula on someone else if you get Dragon Soul Spatula in order to get to 6 or 9 Dragon Soul. All these builds are really powerful, just mix and match based on what you get during the game. And like, again, like if you want like full guides or more information, like it's all on the website, so just check that out or bookmark it and check it out while you play. Next up, Enlightened Talon. So I've seen some like four Siphoner builds with Talon that are pretty effective, but Talon's just like the type of comp that's, I don't know, he's, he just doesn't pull his weight as hard as the other four cost carries, even with all the buffs he's been receiving. It's just because he's a lot more vulnerable now. In the early parts of set four, he had an invulnerability built into his kit, but now he just doesn't have that anymore. So like he needs a ton more damage in order to compete. But if you give him too much damage, he just one taps everything and then he's too broken. So there's a very, very hard balance to find for this Talon champion. But with Morgana, with the Morello, like she can do some carrying of her own as well. But if you mix both of them together, sometimes you, this build can work out. You're never going to really win with this comp without like three-star Morgana, three-star Talon, or like a super two-star Yone. But you could get some thirds, you could get some seconds with this if you like play your cards right and if you got the comp for free. Uh, On to the next build, Sharpshooter Vanguard. This is with Sivir Carry. This build used to be really strong back when everyone was playing Vanguards. Like, before everyone played Sejuani and Aatrox in like every single composition, but people don't really do that anymore. So it's not as effective to run this sort of Last Whisper build. It's still a strong build, just not as good as it was before. But again, if the meta changes, if everyone goes back to defaulting to Sejuani Aatrox in every single build, Sivir with Last Whisper RFC QSS is going to be extremely powerful against those compositions. Now onto Warlords. Warlords, they haven't really disappeared. It's just pretty hard to play because it's hard to get the ideal setup for this, which is Katarina 3-star with 6 or 9 Warlords. And you need to be win streaking in the early game. It's really difficult to force win streak when everyone's playing the Keeper build because Keeper and Brawlers, they just dominate everyone through stage 3 and 4 that this Warlord build doesn't really have a chance to shine against them. It's kind of like a very awkward situation, whereas before no one was playing Keepers or Brawlers, so this comp, the Warlord comp, was the best mid-game comp. But now since everyone's playing those, which are all slightly better than this, they're beating this comp, which means that this comp doesn't get to power spike when it's supposed to, and then that hurts its late game potential. So this comp is really strong in the mid-game, weak in the late game, but strong in the super late game, because once you get Katarina 3-star, like, you're almost unstoppable. But now that it's mid-game, it's being contested by the Brawlers and the Keepers. Uh, it's That's why it's kind of in the B tier, because it's, like, at its strongest point, it's no longer the strongest comp anymore. Uh, onto Duelist, this is just a reroll build. If you get tons of Yasuos, just go for this. You get a top four, most likely, and just call it a day after that. You could win with this comp if you get, like, 2-star Lee Sin, 2-star Yone. Uh, so this build is like kind of volatile in that sense, but overall it's just a reroll comp. If you are getting a ton of Yasuos, like you're pretty much forced to play it, just go for it and then maybe itemize Kalista, itemize Lee Sin, itemize Yone, and like just pray after that point. Because like, again, when you're doing reroll, the game kind of turns more into like a math equation rather than like trying to play TFT because you're not really pivoting anymore. You're kind of just locked into one build and then you're just trying to optimize your chances to get three stars and two stars. I guess every comp is kind of like that if you really think about it, but I feel like it's more so when I play this composition. Uh, onto the next build, we have Assassins. Assassins were really popular in the last week. Uh, kind of died off in popularity because turns out this comp is really difficult to play. So a lot of people who were playing it before kind of stopped because they're like, wow, this is actually pretty hard to execute. It looks a lot easier when I watch people do it when uh, instead of doing it myself. 
But if you hit the comp, it's still really effective. The thing is, is that there are a lot of spirit sharpshooter players, so they kind of steal all your Diana. So you have to know what to do when you can't hit Diana three star, which is pretty difficult for like non high level players. Obviously, high level players, they are used to being contested and they know exactly what to do in those situations. But it's really dependent on a game to game basis on how to pivot out and what to go for after that. So if you don't know how to do that, I do not recommend this composition. But if you want to really one trick and master this composition, by all means, go for it because it will be pretty rewarding in the long run. Uh, after that, don't play the C tiers. Um, I didn't really update the item chart, but I don't think that much has changed. Let me just scroll down to it. Like, yeah, carousel priority. Um, personally, me, I like sword, but people are telling me that glove is the best because it fits in the most comps. Bow is really good if you're going slayers or kale. Rod's good if you're going for any of the locket builds. Uh, same with chain. Chain's also good for GA. Uh, you just kind of want to avoid the bottom three items. Uh, just like make sure you get one of these top five on the first carousel. And then yeah, for the item chart, like not too much has changed. Maybe I'd lower Sunfire Cape a little bit. Maybe put Sunfire Cape down here. Uh, that's probably the only thing I would update, but I was too lazy to do it right now. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much all we have for this week. Again, this is patch 11.7. These are the comps you don't want to miss out on. So definitely bookmark this site, have it up while you're playing or whatever. And then, yeah, look out for future videos on set five, because once info comes out, I'm going to be obviously given uh, all the hot takes on that, all the fresh releases. And yeah, we'll just we'll just go from there. But yeah, thanks so much for checking this out, guys. I will see you all later.